Hello, this is Lady B, and this week I am experimenting with laser cut wood, painting it, shaping it, layering it, just having fun. Now, these days, if you go to craft stores, you can find things like this. They are a plywood, a very thin plywood, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure what it is in millimeters. I tried to check and I, it wasn't exact, but they are a very thin plywood and they come in all kinds of shapes that they'll have images for all kinds of seasons. And this time of year, of course, Halloween's the next big holiday. So we have a haunted house. Now, last year I have painted these we had uh, bought some medallion style ones that were also holiday themed and I painted them up to look like metal. And that was fun, but there's just, they're, they're very flat and I like a lot more texture when I work with my art. So I was at the store looking at this and I started getting ideas because I know that our local library has a maker space where you can go and laser cut your own things, your own projects. And there's very little to no cost for that. If you provide your own materials, I was not charged. I brought my, went to a craft store, bought my own plywood, and I went to work. Now, I'd never used it before, but my sister had. So I picked her brain on what I needed to do. And she told me that what you do is you make a PDF of black silhouettes of whatever it is you want to cut out, and you take it to the library, and then they use an art program there to turn those into vectors. And then they can take the vector and plug it into the machine and the machine will cut out the outline of the vector. So the first thing I did was once I had my haunted house was I plugged a picture of this haunted house into an art program I have. I use Photoshop and I sized it to be the correct size and then with it in the program, with my canvas size set to the same size as the wood I had bought to cut out, I started drawing what I wanted to add. I started with a moon. I found a picture of a moon. I put it on. I sized it, made it fit, and then cut away anything that would have shown through the windows on my building. And then I did the same thing where I just freehanded a couple of trees and some graves and pumpkins. And then once I had it drawn to where I liked it, I then turned them into black silhouettes. I played a little bit in the program with seeing how it would look with, with uh, engraving and other things. But I made the black silhouettes, which then I went to the library and I took my 12 inch by 12 inch board I had bought and I also did some shutters. I forgot to mention that. I also outlined some shutters and I took it to the library and I cut them out. Now this process, if you've never used a laser cutter before, it's really not difficult, but it does take some time because it has to make multiple passes around that perimeter before it can cut it out. In this case, it was 25 passes to cut these out. And it's kind of, you have to be there the whole time because there's always the chance that your wood will burst into flames. So they have a bucket of water right there for safety reasons. So that if that happens, you can put on this glove they have there which is flame proof pick up whatever your project is and dump it in the water so to put out the fire so it was it was kind of boring but at the same time there was always that is it gonna burst into flames or not so you really had to be there 
I thought of recording it doing it, but really it was very, 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 very boring. It just went around over and over and over and over again while I sat there and read a book and made sure I didn't set the library on fire. But we cut them out and I got them home. So once I got them home, the first thing I did was lay out my images. Now I've taken a picture, but I laid them out on this to see how they would look. And I took a picture of it so I would have a reference for as I started to work on this on where everything went. And then I glued on my shutters right there. And the thing about the wood glue is it's a 24 hour cure to make sure. And so I waited a day and this is already Wednesday. It's been a few days. I actually did the cutting last week. It is not a one day project. It takes a little time, but this is, I think I'm going to have so much fun, but 24 hours, they glue, they dried and I can start painting. Now I could just start painting this. And if you're going to paint on these, the thing is, is this is wood and painting, adding that moisture to the wood, it raises the grain of the wood. So I discovered this last year when I painted the medallions. The first thing you have to do on these is you have to prime them and then you sand them. This is a sponge sand block of a medium coarse sandpaper. And I have this and I have sponge blocks of a fine. And last year when I did the medallions, I primed it. <clears throat> I'd sand it with the medium grain, clean off the dust, prime it again, sand it. And I did that two or three times each medallion until I got it smooth where I wouldn't, didn't have that grain anymore. And it did take a little time but this time is a little different this time I'm only priming it once and the reason for that is because I want to keep some of the texture I also want a surface that's really good for drawing on because the very first thing I'm going to do is draw what I want to paint on it like that I've done a time lapse, you can see me drawing it. This is what I've drawn. So you can see where I'm planning on painting and what I'm planning on painting. And I also did the same thing for my trees. And you can see I've got a little owl on this one. I think it'll be really cute. And I did it for my jack-o'-lanterns and my moon. So I'm ready now to paint. So changed my shirt and gotten all my stuff out. We have paints, we have water, a palette, paper towel, my brushes, and of course we have all the things that need to be painted. But I'm also going to be using blues and purples, so I also have some gloves. 
I think I shall start with my moon. Mm. Let's see. A light yellow, I think. Now, when I was doing the masks, it was all about opacity. I'm painting enough layers that you couldn't see my pencil through it. This time it's not. I want to see my pencil through it. I have two layers on here. It dries so fast I was able to come right back and do a second layer. Oh, the edge isn't dried yet. And you can still, if you can see, I don't know if you can, you can still see the drawing right through the, just a little bit. So, I am now going to add a drop of a different, darker paint. Darken this up a little bit. And I'm going to paint my darker spots on my moon with this darker yellow with have a little bit of orange to it. Ooh, that's actually kind of hard to see. I might have painted too much. Well, this one I can see, so there we go. It's very subtle, but that's what I wanted. So I now have this orange. So is there anywhere else I can use that? Oh, look, I have an owl here who needs some glowy eyes. There, perfect. And I also, now I have my jack-o'-lanterns, I want to make them glow too. So let's paint our glow here. And now I'm going to paint my pumpkins because I don't have a good red. So I'm going to take this yellow and I'm going to take some red and I'm going to make my own orange. You know what? This one will probably give me a better orange so let's give this one a try instead. I had this big old tube of orange just for painting jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins and things in my art and it's disappeared and I can't find it. Well I may have to throw this out and start over. You know what now that I remember I believe that red gives me salmon pink when I try to mix it with yellow. So to the other red. Still not there yet. I've mentioned before that you can mix acrylics, but you never actually know what you're going to end up with because they're made, the, the dyes are made from chemicals and sometimes they react in weird ways. So sometimes when you try to mix a red and a yellow to get orange, you get salmon. That is going to have to do because that's the best I can do with the paint I have. I miss my orange paint. Does that look orange enough? Will have to be. You know what? I am going to switch to time lapse.
That's day one of painting. I've color blocked and done two to three coats on everything. The only thing I've put any details on are my little pumpkins. Details are for tomorrow. I did put the base beginning of my owl in here. And so the next day's job is going to be doing the details adding back in all those details you saw that I had drawn in but that I have now painted over I still needed to know where all the lines were in order to do it so we just do it again not a big deal but I am done for today so I'll see you again tomorrow for painting day two okay I'm back. Time to paint my details on my haunted house. Now, the first thing I need to do is, of course, put on gloves because of my allergies to the paint I'm using. But, in between painting this and now, I went out and bought me a darker purple and an orange so that I will not need to try and mix an orange. But the first thing I'm going to paint is actually my moon because I have some glow in the dark paint. But I don't want it to be this yellow, so I'm going to thin it with my gloss varnish. There we go. Oh, that varnish stinks. That may have been a mistake, but that's definitely thinner. So now I'm going to do a thin coat, and maybe more than one. So now my moon should glow in the dark. One glow in the dark moon. And now, whew, now I'm gonna get rid of what I didn't use because that really reeks. So the first thing I want to do here is I've actually decided since I painted this that I don't like these green shutters. I just, I don't like them. So I'm going to break in my dark purple by putting them on my shutters. I definitely like that better. So there we go. Purple shutters. So now that that's taken care of, I'm getting to the main thing I'm doing today, which is finishing this by drawing back in all those details I painted over. And I'm going to start by outlining with black. I'm gonna outline all the larger features first. The roof lines and things. Thank you. 
So there's my large outlines and I've also done them on the trees and everything else except the moon. And now I'm going to trade for a smaller brush and put in the smaller details. And the reason I'm doing that is because you'll notice that I haven't painted around these white areas. I'm afraid if I use the larger brush on these white areas, I'll just end up obscuring all my details. Also, if you can see, you can see my details through my white on my that I drew on with my pencil. I'll be able to now go over those with the black also and add in those details along with putting the shingles and the siding back on. Normally at this point I would do highlights and lowlights um, and shadows, but because my paint ended up so dark, I when it dried, I am actually going to just do the highlights. So I've already done a little bit here. You can see here I've dabbed this lighter lavender, this color. onto the shingles where they would be raised up the bottom edge that would be overlapping the ones below it I've put a little dot on and on here I haven't so you can see the difference and I'm going to do that for all of the shingles I'm going to use a lighter blue on again this lower part that would be raised up on this siding and I'm going to do it on the I guess those are called shingles too. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, and then I will also use it to add extra details on other things like adding some details in my grass and other things, just creating highlights.
So now that it's all painted, before I assemble it, there's one other thing I want to do, and that is I'm going to take some tracing paper, and I'm going to trace my haunted house, and I'm going to trace my windows, and I'm going to draw in those windows, little ghosts, and, and I have this idea of there being a second floor conservatory with man-eating plants. And of course you have to have Igor greeting you at the front door. So I'm going to draw those in and then I'm going to paint them in black. And then erase the, paint, the pencil and glue my paper to the back of my house so that my house can be occupied. So I am gluing it all together. It's my last thing I need to do. And I'm using the tacky glue for it. And I have everything now but my last few gravestones. And I'm thinking of moving this one down a little so we can see that one better. I like that. I almost forgot I had one more thing. And that is bats. I bought these. They're, they're cupcake skewers with little wooden bats on them. And I just thought, you have to have bats flying around. So I'm going to take these off their skewers and glue them onto the haunted house get these out yes that worked all right so I need to glue these down too there now it's done Let's see if I dare to show you there's the haunted house with the bats in the moon and a couple hanging from some trees. Now I'll let this glue dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll spray varnish the whole thing and we'll put the string back on and we'll see how it turned out. So see you tomorrow. And it's done. It was varnished and restrung this morning and it is ready to be hung up. And I think it turned out really good. I hope the person I made it for likes it half as much as I do. And I hope this gives you ideas on things you could do with a laser cutter, whether for Halloween or other holidays, or just decorations around the house. Things you can make that are customized to you. This one, is a lady be exclusive. There's only one and there will only be one. I'm not making another. I love and appreciate all of you. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Until then, whether making this or something else, remember, don't be afraid to suit yourself and make it exclusively you. pumpkin and orange please 12 <laughs> 10 
make it. Just <laughs> suit yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs>